Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Nick here. It is 427 on this rainy Friday afternoon. Now, this is something a little unusual. We are continuing, the, continuing where we left off on Wednesday, and we're going to look at this idea of perception, and we're expanding that idea of talking the talk and walking the walk. As always, if you have any questions throughout this video, please leave them in the comments down below. That could lead to interesting discussion. Of course, I'll leave all my contact information in the description below. So without further ado, let's talk about perception. For starters, let's talk about the definition of perception. It's the awareness or knowledge of sensory information. The word comes from the Latin word perceba, which means to receive, collect, action, or take in possession, etc. So it's becoming aware and having the knowledge of information that was received. So like if let's use an example. So if somebody tells you, oh, this week's hymns are going to be like, tell me the old, old story and at the cross, then what that does is that we receive that information and then we perceive it as, oh, perceive it as, oh, so those will be the hymns on a particular service. Or if you're... If you're driving, then you look at what's in front of you. You examine the situation. Like if you see a lane closure, then you know you gotta move over. Or if you see, sorry, my nose is like itchy today. If you see red and blue lights behind you, that means pull over. So it's, a, it's being aware and having knowledge of information that all of our senses pick up. So like based on what we see, what we smell, what we hear. So this is how it works in general. It's in general it is how one person saw an incident could be different from another person. This is often the case with misunderstandings and irrational notions. Let's look at a couple of examples. Now, before we get to the examples, I want to talk about irrational notions. An irrational notion is basically when somebody falsely accuses you, accuses you of doing something that you know you did not do. As we've talked about in, me in messages and previous videos, this is all in somebody's mind. I mean, let's face it. Let's face it. If you know that you, like, if you know that you were at school, if somebody called you, then that means you were at school. That you weren't able to pick up or if you were doing something you couldn't pick up the phone misunderstandings lead down to a road of living in an imaginary world this is what we're going to talk about in a little bit but in here this is just how it works in general this is how we look at a situation how we hear a situation and so on and there's a process which is on the next slide sensation and perception so as mentioned 
stimulus, energy, light, sound, smell. So in that picture, you have the person looking at the coffee being made. They see it. They smell it. Like it smells like coffee. Their sensory receptors, eyes, ears, nose, they hear it being made. They see it being made and they smell it being made. Then the neurons in the brain go up. It's like a little, it's like firing back and forth between your ears. This thing is pretty powerful. And then the brain, the visual auditory olfactory areas say, are like, huh, can say, oh, we see coffee being made. Or like, oh, it smells like coffee. So this happens. So it's a process. When, we, when there's a stimulus, sensory, firing back and forth, then the brain processes it, and then that's how we perceive information. This also leads down to the idea of force versus control. Remember, the term force means to make someone do something against their will. Control is a person's ability to affect themselves, others' environment, or some other circumstance. Also, regularity of emotions, thoughts, actions, and experiences. So, if you're talking with somebody, and they say to you, well, it's like you forced them to do something. Well, you can just say to them, you did not force anything. Control is the ability to look at the environment and have, have some other circumstance. It could be because could be they perceived it as it, something being forced. They could think it was something being forced. But usually, most of the time, that is incorrect. If you look at the situation over the summer, you can see that it looked like everything happened naturally. But the thing is, just because it looked good, it leads in, it was an unhealthy relationship, which is what we're going to talk about next. So, unhealthy relationships that are forced or controlled. I'm going to zoom in here. Let's see, can I? All right, I guess I can't. Okay. So, unhealthy relationships, there are some. Minimization and blame. Not accepting responsibility for their actions, making a joke when you hurt your partner, telling your partner everything is his or her fault, acting like abuse is okay in the relationship. Obviously, the answer to that is no. No one deserves to be minimized or blamed for things that they did not do. Intimidation, yelling or screaming, using a threatening tone, which is which would be like, I'm going to tell my friends everything you do. That's a threat in tone. Taking, talking down, threatening to hurt themselves or their partner, making your partner feel afraid, tearing up, tearing up pictures, some smashing gifts, destroying objects, sexual abuse, physical abuse, Threats saying you can't live without them, telling your partner you will leave him or her somewhere if they don't do what you say. Constantly threatening to find someone else, saying you will commit suicide if you break up. Now, this is obviously this didn't happen here. Domination. Train your partner like a baby, property, or servant, making all of the all making all the decisions, having expectations that no one can be, controlling who your partner sees and spends time with, 
set all the rules in the relationship. I don't think that happened here either. Humiliation, putting down your partner, calling your partner names, constant criticism, making your partner feel like he or she is crazy, humiliating your partner in front of people, making your partner feel guilty, embarrassing them. I would say that happens a little bit here. Possessiveness, using jealousy as a sign of love, accusing your partner of cheating on you, not letting your partner have other friends, telling your partner how to think, dress, and act. So I would say there's a little bit of possessiveness here as well. And obviously the accused, the accusations came and sometimes they came in bunches. But again, this is all about power and control. Seeing how far they can go to make you break. This is all. Usually all of this is in their minds. This is how they perceive everything. Verbal communication versus text. When we talk normally, we can sense what the other person might be thinking or they are absorbing the information, which is called sensation, like we talked about a few minutes ago. After they absorb the information, they can perceive the information. So, like, you guys watching this video are perceiving what I'm telling you. Test communication, on the other hand, isn't as easy. If someone receives a test that's, that can sound rude or not nice, that can be misperceived and miscorrectly absorbed that information. So if they say something rude to you that wasn't supposed to be rude, you might, things get misinterpreted and misperceived over tests. So you really got to be careful. You can always ask them, like, what do you mean by that? Living in an imaginary world. People who live in an imaginary world have a challenge of differing what is real and what isn't. For example, during the times of taking a nap, doing housework, or getting mail, that was perceived as something that wasn't real. There are both pros and cons of living this way, but usually the cons outweigh the pros and cons when in a relationship. And then that picture there, it says, I feel like I live in my own imaginary world more than I live in reality. So. Let's look at this for a moment. We're all going to daydream. We're all going to go off in our own little world from time to time. But when it impacts what is happening in real life, then that becomes an issue. Because it's then it's like you ask them, are you sh like, are you sure that's for real or is that something you just made up? You see, people think. They can slip on by you, but when we are smart enough, we know that we have to decide for ourselves what is real and what isn't. And certainly, knowing what we say is real, then we have nothing to worry about. So the effects of living in an imaginary world. They see the world through one lens, thinking everything is bad most of the time. Everybody's out to get them, which no one is. Trouble deferring what is real and what isn't, as I just talked about a moment ago. They tell tall tales or false stories about one's actions and pushing the victim away, especially if they know they had nothing to do with whatever the false accusation is. So basically... This is how perception is. You guys have to decide what is real and what isn't. Using, getting that information, processing that information, and then making a clear decision. Because if you live in an imaginary world, you're not going to be able to defer what is real and what isn't. Because that, because those two things don't miss. And I hope you found this 
extra video helpful. And as always, please comment and subscribe. Let's see if we can get 1 million views and 400, 4,000 watch hours trying to get these videos monetized. And of course, if you have any questions about this or you would like to see more information like this, be sure to hit that like button. And until next time, Nick here, have a great weekend.